Successful people build one another. They motivate, inspire, and push one another. That's in the words of Michael Corder. This is the reason we bring you this educative and very motivational program, Feminine Scope, on OGBC 90.5 FM. On Feminine Scope, we invite strong ladies and women who have achieved in life so that they can also tell us about their experiences while growing up. Before you hear from my guest this morning, let me say, how are you doing? Anyway, you're listening to OGBC 90.5 FM. I hope you're enjoying your weekend. Good to know. My name is Tony Shugbe, so you also like to call me T.S. My guest this morning is in the house and ready to share her experiences with us. Her name is Mrs. Jadisola Adikmiju, who is an author, a certified life coach and relationship counselor. It's nice to have you on this program. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Um, we'd like to know you. Who is Adekweju Jadisola? What was growing up like for you? Where did you grow up? Who were your parents? The schools you attended? Thank you. I grew up in a loving family setting. Actually, I was born in Ibado some years ago. And I am the last one. Let last? Me Baby of the house. Honestly. <laughs> so, I would not say I was pampered, but I grew up with loving siblings how many you know, were you? We were four. Okay. And I have an older brother is number one, and then the remaining three were girls. Mm. And so growing up, because my dad was a civil servant, my mom was a secondary school teacher. So in those days, they used to transfer them. So due to the transfer, at a point, my brother had to go to the hostel. Mm -hmm. So it was mainly the three girls playing together, fighting <laughs> together, loving <laughs> one another. And of course, like being the last born, I would say my parents were harsh, really, not harsh. They were disciplinarians in a way. So my siblings would be telling me that ah, they were not as tough on you as they were on <laughs> us. So we had that growing up. From Ibad, I started my schooling at Omalewa Nonsian Primary School for a brief period before my dad was transferred to Adwe Kiti. We went there briefly before we came to Abe Kuta. And then coming down here, I went to St. Benedict's Private School, which was not too far from where we were living, which was about a housing estate. So everything was kind of cozy. My dad made sure we had storybooks. That we were more of indoor people because he wasn't the type that goes out for parties here and there. Mm -hmm. So we had that kind of setting up. But I noticed something about myself that I was a people person. I love people. I love relationships. In fact, one of my big uncles during my wedding was talking to people. He said that when we were younger, if people come visiting and they were fighting during a game, that I would come around telling them, why are you fighting? <laughs> that was so young. I said, is it not just a game? And this mind followed me to the secondary school. Okay. I saw that I found it difficult to hurt people's feelings. So, you know, teenagers, they could be, sometimes they could pick on you. They could do many things. When it will be my turn to respond, I would just realize, ah, do I really want to hurt this person? Mm -hmm. So that made me an object of, you know, sometimes teenage pressure, peer pressure. And funny enough, you know, that's what formed the bedrock of what I do today. Okay. Counseling young people, telling them to stand up to be who they ought to be instead of being pushed around by peer pressure. Mm -hmm. So that's how it's been for me. Okay, which secondary school did you attend? The Jemotito High, High school. school. Just beside us here. Honestly. <laughs> and our principal then, Mrs. Egbeyemi, Ah, was, Mama Yika Egbeyemi, you passed through her. Honestly. We were the second set of the school. My immediate elder sister was part of the first set. And she was determined to make the school to be outstanding. And she did quite well. Hmm. Wow, that's interesting. So after your secondary school education... Any other education? Yes. Okay. I moved on to UI. You know, in those days, it's like, it's either you pick UI or Unilag or Ife. Or Unibem. So, or Unibem <laughs> for those who want to leave home. So I was in UI. Incidentally, my two sisters were also there. So the love, I don't want to use the word pampering. Mm -hmm. You continue there. And whilst there, I got involved with a Christian group. What else? Let's start with the course. Chemistry. Oh, chemistry. I, I studied chemistry, I see. which was a very good case. Mm. And, you know, during our off times in school, we, I, I joined a team. We have Bible clubs in the lecturer's quarters for children, guiding them, 
you know, it was really a beautiful time in school. It wasn't as easy like it was for those who are here now. In those days, you would trek to the classes, that you would get vehicles in the campus. At that time, we had challenges of water and UI, but mm. all in all, it was a very sweet time. Mm. UI passed through me beyond the course. And so from there, I went to serve at Kaduna State. And you know the funny thing? When I realized that my work, my passion was to impact lives, I came back to UI not mm. too long ago. It was funny. <laughs> you know, coming back now and going back to school to study social work. Oh, you went back to UI? Yes, to UI. After how many years? Ah, uh, I would say over 20 years. Let me say over 25 years. You now went back? Yes, because oh. I went at 17 years old. <laughs> there, but now going back around 50 yeah. you know what it meant but so it was what, what was the qualification i mean what requirements were you asked or was it for masters or you had to i had to do a postgraduate diploma, okay, diploma. in social work okay. though i had a master's before this time that was intercultural education okay. but i had to go back to you i had to study this social work because i realized my work primarily was with people helping people giving guidance, linking them with resources, helping Why them. Why didn't you go in the line of the chemistry that you read initially? I you never worked with that? Apart from when I served and I taught in the secondary school, I saw that my passion, even when I served, they allowed four girls to live with me in the school. The principal said, oh, you are such a young girl, because at that time, I, I was 21 years when I was mm -hmm. serving. Mm -hmm. So she asked four girls to stay with me. And we became so close that the principal had to call them that, what do you girls have to do with this Yoruba girl? <laughs> you know, we're that close. So I knew that for me, life was more about impacting people, mm -hmm. helping them to locate who they have meant to be maximizing their potentials. Mm. So when I left the I service here, yeah, mm. I worked with a Christian organization, which I worked with for about 25 years, took me to Abuja and various places. One of their passion too is to make sure that people discover the best they are meant to be. So while I worked at Abuja, Kutunku Soho, we had um, adult literacy classes for people. Such interesting work takes me to places, even within and outside the country. And while he's doing that, the body made me to start writing books for young people, which also increased my sphere of influence because they will call for counseling, they will invite me for seminars, and then it's just, for me, it's been interesting so far. Mm. I thank God for that. Now, as a certified life coach and relationship counselor, you do counseling. This relationship, where does it start and where does it end? in your own field because when you talk about relationship what i'm looking at is maybe in the area of um women man relationship but i'm sure it goes beyond that in sure. your own field can you just appreciate yeah i'm primarily a relationship coach well for young people either with relationship with them sharing them with relationship with their parents with other people is one of them Secondly, is relationship with the opposite sex. Very, very important. They need to know their boundaries because a lot of young people's lives have been mad, not only for girls, even young guys. So we teach them you should have clean relationships, relate well. You know, I went to a mixed school, so I know how to relate with guys. Relate well with them without crossing certain boundaries that it's just like when you're driving a car if you put it on a hill and you you accelerate and you remove the brakes it will go down with you there's a path you get to you know you may think maybe for a girl i just like this boy there's nothing between us and then you make him your best friend you start telling him things you get emotionally entangled mm -hmm. and the day you are hot and you are crying the boy will want to embrace you sorry stop crying it's, and the body be, the hormones will respond mm -hmm. and stuff like that then relationship for people who want to get married because i get a lot of calls from those people too sometimes you know we talk about love is blind so when they start this issue there are certain things that they ignore just in the name of love mm. but when you ignore such things like how does he treat others does he keep his word does he have a skeleton in his cupboard there is a way you can know some of these things and when it becomes consistent does he have anger problems does it tell lies? Does it tell lies <laughs> consistently? Uh -huh. So these are spotlights that you don't ignore. So we try to guide them to see some of these things. Because once you get into marriage 
and it's with somebody who is of a crooked character it becomes a problem if it's a woman she can never attain the best you wish to be to be you see some women looking so sad so morose they mm -hmm. don't want to go back home after work why there's problem at home no mm -hmm. peace of mind so the relationship covers everywhere even at your place of work how do you treat others human beings are the prime of god's creation so you don't just treat them anyhow because today they are poor or they are in a low estate you value every life how has your own contribution impacted your immediate environment the society at large too well maybe I, talking from experience the little little experiences that you had to deal with well it's very interesting that when you have people around you for example in present day not like own days there is a lot of depression out there that's what i would put down <laughs> that depression in women exactly especially. right so you know, when we talk with them and they are guided because incidentally my social work is health and specialized in mental health okay. so one is able to know when this person is beginning to cross the line freely into depression so the approach is to get the person, get close to the person, talk therapy, gently guide the person to discover that, ah, I have an issue. Once the person realizes there's a self-awareness, the person can begin to work on it and then becomes more productive at workplace and that's affecting my immediate environment. Reason I was still talking with someone who wasn't even aware that she was depressed. Mm. It's just that she just keeps to herself at times, does not feel like going to work, doesn't feel like getting up in the morning. Those are signs that we quickly help, that once we notice, begin to work on. And we see changes in these people, which is a joy for me. And for some that had already gone to the extreme, we recommend them to see a psychiatric doctor. You know, the issue is in our society, people, once they hear the word psychiatrist, they become mm -hmm. afraid. Hey, mental health problem. Well, mm -hmm. it's not like that. So somehow they like to go, once they meet with some of us, okay, you are a social worker, they feel calm. They feel more relaxed than just saying psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. But when it gets to that level, we really help them. We guide them to us taking professional help in that direction. Thank you. We have seen from experience that these days, Younger people are getting more depressed. Why is this so? You see a teenager having BP, high blood pressure. You see a teenager. The other time I was just walking along the street and I saw this young girl or lady at one of the schools very close to us. And she already had stroke. She couldn't wow. over. What could be responsible for some of these things that we see in this present young generation thank you ma one of the things i observe is the situation of the society at large hmm. you know there are certain things that when we were younger we were not seeing you know if you hear a gunshot somewhere for the next few days you'll be panicking yeah. as a young child but sometimes on the street in the night we hear such so there is fear in the atmosphere there's this fear of being kidnapped as well it wasn't so much as in our days Another thing that I observe with the teenagers is that, or the young people, is that they find it difficult to have normal interaction with others. They are more glued to their phone. Excuse me. And there is something that happens when you relate with other people. You interact, you warm up, you relax. But these people kind of live inside their phone. Mm. You know? So there is this kind of life that is different from the normal life. After some time, depression is likely to set in. When they meet normal people, human beings, sometimes they don't even know how to talk or how to relate with them. So loneliness is one of the things that causes this depression. And then we set high standards for them. When you see a parent that tells a child, no matter how much you strive hard in the exam, if you are not the first, you are nothing. You have not achieved anything. So we have sometimes some of these children striving to attain heights that is difficult for them. They now get to and breaking points. They get to breaking points and they find it difficult to cope. At times too, they don't have confidence that they can share their problems with. So when they bottle things up, it becomes a problem. And let me add one more. There's this issue of inferiority complex that many of these young people feel that they are not up to. They compare themselves with the so-called models in phone that they see on TV, on, let me not say TV, it's now internet days. So you find out that 
when they do such things they look at themselves they feel i'm not fine enough i'm ugly and this i've not achieved enough so depression gradually sets in some feel they are not loved some have problems from their parents parents looking after money not caring for them so one of the things we try to and uh, let them know is that you are precious there's something in you that can be of benefit to others if you just stop looking only at your own problems and you look outwards to be a blessing to others and i've seen it help a lot of young people they say i can impact lives i'm someone i have a gift you know it suddenly changes the way they look at things and it has helped quite a number of them my guest on this program today feminine scope is mrs jadisola adikweju she's an author and a certified life coach she's also a relationship counselor the ladies now they think about what the future has for them in terms of marriage they believe oh i'm too old hey there's no man there for me i want you to talk to them ladies by the time they are getting to 30 31 32 33 ah and parents too are not where's your husband <laughs> want to see your husband how do they handle this and it's really true that more and more ladies are not finding husbands how can we assist it's actually a problem in society now what counsel are the men <laughs> the men are out there developing themselves they want to have money but when they finish having money they will not likely come back to their age mates that they ought to marry they still they go for younger ones so mm. that's actually what happens i will tell the young ladies first and foremost don't put the problem on your head i see people you're going out you look depressed everybody's looking at me as an old maid i'm not married so they go out without a smile on their face they go out looking morose they so they will not attract people to themselves mm. so one of the things i would want to tell them is that focus on being a blessing to people around one elderly woman she was elderly then she told me how she got her husband she said she felt she was already getting late in marriage but she usually goes to her uncle's place once a while to just clean up and be a blessing to help him he said it was while she was there that a friend came visiting him and said this girl so hard working so loving i must marry her and they got married so when you are serving others and you don't focus on your own problem you will be attracted people no matter how we say people are out there and they are looking for um, husbands they cannot get there are men to looking for wives what are they looking for they are looking for a woman that will add value to their lives so why don't you make yourself more valuable i see a lot of ladies when they are getting a bit older they pay more attention on their appearance they try to dress thinking it's only the dressing that will attract people yes dress well but can you add to it by adding some good works these things are something that a man that wants a steady home looks for how do you care for children are you a cook or you are the type that every time they see you outside you are going with cola <laughs> I, fast I food that fast you food, are fast food you are person. always with fast food this man looks at you i like this lady but will she be able to prepare breakfast for my children when they are going out he looks at you and looks at ah this lady spent fifty thousand naira on earrings how much is she earning would this one but, not be a liability to me rates. they want to buy both <laughs> so <laughs> some, rates. exactly we got 250 400 wow so men who don't want a casual fling they want something valuable make yourself valuable and they will seek for you mm. that's my counsel so how did you meet your husband and who is he yes i married to the jade peju he's an architect he's a lecturer and he's a pastor is also involved in young people loving young people guiding them so we met in church mm. doing the same assignment i just noticed that i was someone that loved young people he would guide them teach them train them in fact he loves them at times to the detriment of his own person <laughs> yeah. so when he showed interest that he wanted to marry me i said ah i like you i respect you i don't want to marry you why people who are like this they don't take care of their families you are always helping others you spend all everything on others you don't take care so that was my initial concern and i see it all around men who are very good outside but they don't have time for their family but as a christian i prayed and asked god for guidance and he gave me peace that i could go ahead with him and sincerely i have no regrets he loves me he loves the family he loves us 
and he does not reduce his love for outsiders mm -hmm. so he's able to balance those things and that's how we met hey. thank god for the journey do you party well it depends what you mean by party when people do weddings i go okay. when they, and those are the that things are when they are at we go that, that's, those are, the, so those are nigerian it. parties i don't yes. expect that your age to be going for disco and all uh -huh. that uh -huh. <laughs> it should be all one best of with uh -huh. our gaily <laughs> it's okay so, thank you so much for finding time to be with us so what type now. of music would you want me to play for you gospel Gospel. appreciating god for his faithfulness okay do you have any artists in mind i have quite a number of them okay. nathaniel bassi is someone that i appreciate his music draws okay. me closer to god okay so what track would you like i'm someone that people say can't keep a tune okay. so <laughs> i'm a bit shy when it comes to singing uh, for others to hear okay no don't worry you are singing for me now so i'm others am i others now See, let, let me back you up. Okay, there is a song I want to okay. sing. I cannot remember whether it's the one who wrote the song. Okay. It says, All my life you, you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Yes. With every breath that I am here. Yes, I'll do that for you. Thank I'll you. I'll do that for you.
<laughs> Thank you so much for finding time to be with us. I appreciate you. And our regards to your husband. Thank you. Uh, architect Dr. DG. Adepiju. That's a feminine name. Adepiju. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's, people sometimes call me Peju before I would tell them, no, it's my <laughs> son name. Wow. And anyway, anyway, thank you so much. So that's it on this edition of Feminine Scope on OGBC 90.5 FM. I thank my guest again, Mrs. Jadisola Adikweju, who is an author, a certified life coach and relationship counselor. So let me thank my producer, Timila Tijani, ably assisted by Fumila Yuakintoye. My studio manager is Samuel Adeneye. I remain your host, Tony Shogwes on TS. Don't forget that we're in the ember months. Let moderation still be your word word. Good morning. <laughs>